Hi everybody, how's it going? So in this video, we're going to look at manually creating an S3 bucket for website hosting. So let's get to it. So I'm back on the main page of my account. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go to the S3 service. And so I type in S3, I just click here and it'll redirect me to the S3 service. Now, what is S3? Well, basically S3 stands for Simple Storage Service. And basically it's an object storage system. It allows us to store data from anywhere and basically any file type. So we can store things like video, audio, uh, documents, uh, text files, database backups, uh, anything you really want. Okay, so the kinds of use, use cases that we have for S3 for the most part is backing up of storage, backing up of databases, uh, potentially storing like uh, virtual machines, you know, the disk for virtual machines. Uh, what I'll be using it for is using a static website so we can host static websites using S3 buckets. And, you know, build artifacts for builds, that's another one, log files and all kinds of different kinds of things, right? So what is an S3 bucket though? Essentially what an S3 bucket is, it's, it's a container. So it's a place where you can give it a name and you can just put a whole bunch of files inside of it, kind of as if you would put water in a bucket, right? You just put more water in, more water in, more water in. The difference is this bucket has no visual height. You can it, it can go on forever, okay? So you can have many, many gigs or even terabytes of data inside of an individual bucket. It's not a folder, and the reason why it's not a folder is they do have the concept of a folder in S3, but it's based on paths. But we don't really need to know any of that at this stage in order to achieve uh, what we need to do, which is to deploy an Angular application. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new bucket. So there's this create bucket button here. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it a name. So I'm gonna call it Angular DevOps. And that should be good enough for a name. The region I'm gonna put is Sydney for me, just simply because I'm in Sydney, but obviously you've got a vast number of regions here. I'm not gonna be copying any settings for an existing bucket because I want to do all the settings myself. So I'll click next. Now you can actually version objects within a bucket. So say you have two versions of a Word document you wanna keep, you can actually turn on versioning and you can keep multiple versions of a Word doc inside of S3. I don't need to do that here. I'm not gonna be doing anything like that. Server access logging, we could use this for our website. What it will do is any access to our bucket or any um, file that tries to be accessed within our bucket will be logged into another bucket. But for the simplicity of this video, I'm not gonna enable that just yet. Tags is something to do with tracking project uh, costs and things like that. We don't really care about that stuff at this stage, but probably down the line you would add some tags here so you can remember it's part of a particular project and things like that. Object level logging, again, that's more for auditing, so we can track how a file is accessed or if it's been updated or a new file's been created, so on and so forth. We're not gonna be doing any of that either. Default encryption, we're not gonna be turning on encryption here because we want the files that we deploy with Angular to be exactly the text that they need to be. So there's no need to encrypt because we want to host this over the internet. So encrypting it would be a bad idea. We're not going to be doing any metrics around CloudWatch, but you can enable that if you really wanted to. I'm not going to do that in this situation. And I'm just going to click next. Now on this screen, we've got the um, user management so we can specify which users in aws can perform what kind of actions on objects within our bucket 
I'm just going to leave it as myself for now and give full access. I'm not going to add any other accounts because it doesn't really matter at this stage because every account I've got so far has full admin rights anyway. So there's no need to worry about it. This public permissions thing, uh, it is important for the files that we upload, but for the bucket, we're going to make sure we don't give read access. So we don't want people seeing what's inside our bucket from the internet. So I'm not going to grant that access. And for system permissions, also, we're not going to grant um, log delivery at this point, which is some other complex thing we don't need to worry about. I'm going to click next. And we've got review. And I like all that, so I'm going to click create bucket. It takes a few moments. And now we have our Angular DevOps bucket. So if I click into this bucket now, we get a list of tabs at the top here. So we've got some permission stuff, which I'm not going to be changing at this point. There's some management stuff, which is to do with lifecycle. You can have some analytics and all this other stuff. We're not going to be touching any of this stuff. It's not really that important for what we're doing. I am going to come into the properties tab though. And I'm going to go to static website hosting, right? Because we want to make this a website. This bucket be a host of a website. I'm going to click in here and we're going to click this first option, which is use this bucket to host a website. So that's pretty simple. Now the index document I'm going to specify here is our index.html that we saw in our um, distributed files when we did the ng build. I'm going to specify that there. Now for the error document, I'm going to leave that blank for the moment just to demonstrate a problem that we need to fix. Redirection rules, we don't really need to do anything here, not for the Angular app anyway. And I'm just going to click Save. So if I click back into here, you'll see now there's a URL. If I click on this URL, so far we get nothing. But this is the kind of URL we will get. It'll basically be the name of the bucket, .s3 dash website, and then the the code for the region that we're in, .amazonaws.com, all right? So that's the URL that AWS gives to us. Also note, this is not HTTPS, it's just HTTP. We will address the HTTPS problem in the next phase. We're not gonna do it for this phase because that will require us to do SSL certificates and a bunch of other stuff, which we're not gonna do right now. So you can see we're forbidden at the moment, and that's essentially because we have no permissions and we have no files in, in the bucket. So if I come back to overview, you'll see we have nothing in the bucket. So we're gonna add those files now that we published earlier in our Angular CLI build, and we're gonna upload them to this bucket right now. So I'm gonna click upload, and then I'm gonna click add files. And that's going to bring me to my Angular DevOps uh, folder. I'm going to go into the disk folder. I'm going to Angular DevOps. And I'm going to select all the files in this directory, except for the licenses, because it doesn't really map. I'm going to click Open. And that will take a little bit. As you can see, now we have the list of all the files here. Now I'm not gonna click upload straight away, I'm gonna click next because every file that I just uploaded, I want the people to be able to access from the internet. So to do that, unlike what I did with the bucket, I am now gonna set grant public read access to these objects because I want to be able to access these objects from the internet. So now I'm gonna click upload and just in a few moments, you'll see the files will start showing up in the bucket. Cool. So now if I come back to my tab where I had the URL and give it a refresh, we have our application. And I can click on the buttons and the URL show up in the in the browser up here and the feature changes down here. So everything looks really good, fine peachy right now. If 
but there's one problem. If I take away this bit here and I refresh the page, the page loads and that's all good. However, if I click on a feature and that creates the feature one URL up here in the browser, if I now decide to load the, this URL, we get a 403 forbidden. And that's because the bucket doesn't know what to do with that URL because there's no folder or file in here that's called uh, feature one, all right? So we need to be smart and tell the bucket that whenever it gets any error in the system, so it'd be 403, 500, whatever it is, we want it to redirect back to this index.html page. Now, you may have noticed earlier I did something intentionally when I was setting up the website. I ignored this error document. Now, the error document, this thing, whatever we put in here, will fire whenever there's an error. So 403, 500, whatever. If I now save this after typing index.html, and now I come back up and I refresh this time, you'll now see that it loads the page and feature one is selected. Now that's all well and good because that's the default anyway. But if I click on feature two now and then refresh, you'll see the website refreshed, but feature two is still selected. So now the routing for Angular is working as intended. So that's where I'm gonna end in this video. In the next video, what we're actually gonna do is all that stuff I just did manually just now, we're gonna automate that using something called CloudFormation. So I'll see you in the next video.